Hello, Fucandy here, and yes, it has finally landed. We are here in City Skylines with the Plazas and Promenades DLC. So you've just downloaded the DLC and you've upgraded your first residential district and you're happily sitting there watching your sims go about their days on foot with no traffic at all in your city. How nice is this? But what's next, you might think? Well, there is so much more to this DLC than first meets the eye. In fact, I would probably call it a detailer's wet dream. There are so many new props and decals that there are just endless possibilities when it comes to creating wonderful, extravagant and beautiful plazas in your cities. And for anyone that knows my channel already, you'll know that I am a detailer, but I like to use as many of the vanilla assets as possible. And this DLC gives us just that. A hell of a lot more props. So I've been lucky enough to have early access to this DLC and I've had a play around and here I am today to give you my top 5 tips on how to create the ultimate plaza for your city. So I'm going to use this 28 by 28 block here to show you how you can build a really nice large city centre plaza within your city and this will just demonstrate my tips for you. So the first tip is symmetry. And I think this one is really actually super, super important. You want plasters to look like they've been planned out. And when things aren't symmetrical, it can go a little bit haphazard. Now, those of you who know me will know that I don't always do symmetrical things in my city, and I quite like doing things a little bit off piste. But I think for a plaza, it looks really good. So that's now the overall shape of our city centre plaza in, and you can see that that is super symmetrical all the way around. And we've already got a flood of Sims walking around the different areas. But clearly, to attract them, we want to put some different parks and plazas and make use of what the DLC gives us. So, the centre point here, we're going to use the large fountain plaza. And I want to make sure the orientation of this is spot on because we've got this lovely large entrance down into the main plaza here. So having these fountains this way around is much nicer than having one centrally on like that. It's a little bit shady. And this being the key focal point with the unique building at the end, that's what we want to make sure there. So symmetry and orientation are super important. We also have the plazas that cross the roads, so we're going to use two of those at either end of our plaza there. They are of course different, but it still relates to a symmetrical shape. And then likewise, we're going to use the small fountain plaza on either side. Again, so we're creating that symmetry and that orientation for our main plaza. So we've got nice entrances up here with the same buildings on either side. It looks like it's being planned out that way rather than just being haphazard with different plazas all over the place. And then just to finish it off, we're going to do something that is not super symmetrical, but does add symmetry because it's two different assets, but ones that can be used nicely in the central square here. Now with this asset as well, another little tip for detailing up your plazas is if you have got Bob, use it. So this asset clearly comes with these light tiles, which I don't think blend in very well with our bluestone roads here. So if you have got Bob and you have got access to mods, Let's just remove those tiles and we can add our own in around it or just use this space as concrete area. It looks a lot nicer if your tiles and colours all blend in together rather than being a little bit random. Now the second tip I have for you today is also including public transportation. Now this is one surefire way to get a load of sims walking through your plaza. So what I am going to do here is make use of the new metro station. So the parallel underground metro station for this, turning it into a little bit of a transport plaza. Now, because I have got mods, I can use move it to align this really nicely. So what I want is this sitting in the corner here. Again, thinking about orientations, we've got nice viewpoints down to the metro stations. And of course, in terms of symmetry, our first tip, we definitely want to mirror this on the other side. Now, if you don't have move it, you don't have to put it diagonally onto the corner there. But if you do have the luxury of mods, it's a good idea to play around with it so that you get beautiful viewpoints from all around your plaza. And there are an awful lot of options for new public transport within this DLC, so I would really recommend taking advantage of them where you can because there's some super cute assets that go really nicely with the plaza assets. And also, who doesn't like new transportation options? The new bus station and train station work really nicely in combination as well to give you a little mini transport hub like this one here. Tip number three is do not be afraid of green spaces. Now, because I do have the luxury of mods being that I am playing on PC here, 
I am going to actually fill in this centre area with concrete so that these assets blend in nicely and then that gives us some opportunities to do some really nice prop detailing which we will come onto in the central plaza there. In terms of the outside, yeah, don't be afraid of this green space. Don't feel like you need to fill it in with numerous different plazas and different props. You really, really don't need to. So what we are going to do here instead is make use of some of the new prop fencing that comes with the DLC. We've got various different fences here, the new fence short, the fence large. We also have these ones as well, which is in a slightly different colour. And we also, of course, have the glass fence, which is super exciting. Numerous opportunities available with those. So what I am going to use is the fence number two short. And we're going to, again, make use of the fact that we have prop line tool being on PC. If you don't have that, that's not a problem. You can still place in these assets and do the same thing. Or, of course, you can use some of the network fencing already available with the game. So just to decorate up our plaza, I am going to go around and add fencing around all of the open green space areas on the outside, which just helps to give a little framing to our main plaza area. Yeah, the big lesson here is don't be afraid of it because it really adds a nice pop of colour in amongst all the kind of greys and concretes and things that you tend to see around these large plazas. So here we have the design before we get the prop detailing in and you can see the green just really helps to give it a little pop of life. Tip number four is use of decals. Now this DLC comes with way more decals than we've ever had before. And on first glance, you might think, what on earth is that? Like they're super bright and super colorful. But actually, if you are using the wall-to-wall -wall specialization, they go so, so well with it. So having these colorful buildings on the outside of our plaza and then using these decals within it really helps to blend things in nicely. So instead of creating one massive area with lots of the same decals, which can become a little bit colour blinding, if we're being honest with ourselves, what I am going to do is create a little bit of a checkerboard pattern with it to kind of give that sort of arts district feel to the area. And we are being careful to line up the colours suitably so that they're nicely mixed. We're not having two blue decals right next to each other or two orange. And that gives us just a super cute little pattern. And so when we look down at these decals positioned like this and we look out at the buildings, it really adds to bring some of the colour from the buildings into the middle of our plaza. Now, clearly some of the plazas do have those pops of colour on already, but they're not all of the different decals and the different pinks and things like that seem to be lacking from the plazas. So this is one way to introduce them and help it all blend in. Now on top of this, just for my specific plaza, but you can of course do anything you want. And because I feel like this is a little bit of a sort of arts district vibe, I am going to add this new funky fountain onto the top of it. And again, because we're thinking about symmetry and orientation, what I am going to do is copy this entire lot and add them in in all four corners. Because again, like tip number one, this helps to add to the symmetry effect of our plaza. And then one final thing that we do want to do is just make sure that these fountains are aligned nicely again so that when we're down at street level we can see that these were carefully placed and carefully planned out into their positions so both of these are now facing into this central park and that's exactly what we want to do over here as well we're using tip number one and tip number four together to produce a really colorful bright arts district style central plaza which just goes really nicely with the buildings around it so always consider the environment that your plaza is in. So tip number five is to study the assets and use the props within them. So here we have decals that we can access, we have an ice cream stand that we can access, a fountain and benches, and all of these planters and benches here as well. What you can do is help to extend this out if you wanted to, just to create some different shapes and styles. So let's go into our decals, we'll find the same one as this. I'm just going to use Propline tool to put this in, but of course if you are on console or on vanilla, you can just place these in manually. And then what we are going to do is go in and grab our picnic bench, which we know we already have. And we're going to extend out this pattern a little bit further, which I think just helps to add a bit of variation to it. So if you do have find it, you can go ahead and find the planters that are also on this asset, which are these, and then mirror that pattern this side as well. So what we will do here is add these in, in a nice uniform way. And we will break out a couple of segments here to make some kind of areas that you could deem as being walk through. 
And then let's go ahead and also grab the same benches that are on this side as well. And we can also add in a couple of these just to mirror out that shape and pattern that we have the other side. All that helps to do is just add a little bit of differentiation and extend the props and the assets that you already have, making it a little bit more interesting. And so in the interest of tip one and symmetry, we will go ahead and do that on the other side as well. Another example of props that we can take within assets are these hedges here. Again, only available if you do have find it. However, you could use, of course, the props from the Park Life DLC and the such like to recreate this. Now we've got these cute little right angled triangles. So what I would like to do is sort of replicate them on the other side of the walkway here. So let's get it nicely aligned up into the corner and we'll just create ourselves a really nice right angle out of that. Now clearly next to that, we also have a planter that is not available. But what we can do is also then look around other assets to see what else we could take. So we've got these super cute little benches on here. We also have benches within this one and some of the plant pots and the such like over there. And there are a whole ton of assets that come with this DLC. So just go through them and make use of them. So these benches we saw used next to the hedges the other side. So let's create a little bench area here. And we will also add in some of the plant pots that we also saw just to create that consistency throughout our entire plaza. And then of course, abiding to tip one again, we will go ahead and copy all of this into our various different corners of our plaza here. So there we go. It just adds a little bit of an extension to the main plaza here. I think in order to do that, we're copying some of those patterns from it, but then making it our own by adding in the props in a slightly different way. I mean, if you wanted a little bit of extra height, you could go as far as to add in a couple of the linden trees on either end of the hedge as well, which could be a nice little effect. Again, an extension to that plaza there. There we go. We're just continuing that tree pattern down on through the rest of the plaza. And another example is here in this food court plaza where we've got these benches again only available in find it but there are similar props that you can work with so those benches you can find within park life and there are of course other tables that are available as well without the use of find it but we've got some over here so let's mirror some of this over this side and of course now with the props that come with this dlc we do also now have food trucks as well which is super super exciting to get a few more of those in so let's add another one over here and just copy some of that effect that we've got on this side. We can of course use some of the other assets. We've got this wonderful little ice cream hut here, which I think actually goes quite nicely into the back of the metro station. So we can position that right here facing out this way. And perhaps we actually go as far as to add a couple more benches in here for that. Now, if you want people to walk across these spaces as well, the other tip is to go ahead and use some extra pedestrian pathways. So you do not always have to stick to just the plazas and the walkways. Don't be afraid to add in additional, just regular pedestrian paths because that will get Sims moving across your empty spaces. Now, if you have also got the mid-century modern content creator pack, there are suitable benches within this as well, which is quite frankly, super exciting. So I think around here where we've got a few eating places, we will use some of these too. We've got various different styles, some with parasols and some without. So what we will do is do a little bit of mix and match and they do come in fairly bright and rank styles. But again, it goes with the wall to wall buildings actually around it. So in some ways it's quite pleasing from that respect. And Sims should actually sit at these, which is super exciting. So we'll keep an eye on them and see if anyone actually does. I think what we will do is add another one of the ice cream huts onto the side of this building as well. And let's just shift these tables over to give a little bit more breathing room there. But this is just starting to fill out our plaza spaces with some nice and bright and colourful detailing. Now also do absolutely definitely make use of the new statues that come with this DLC. No longer are we just confined to the dude on the horse. We have a lot more options now. And making use of these with the decals as well can really help to brighten them up and help them blend into the rest of the wall-to-wall -wall themes and also the other decals around the various different plazas as well. 
So that can look quite nice just in isolation by itself. You don't always need to go ahead and do wild crazy detailing around these but what we will do here is just add in a couple more benches just to help fill out from these little benched areas around our hedges here as well and copy that theme over. All that remains to do in our plaza now is a little bit of extra detailing, a few more trees to add a bit of height and a few more props just to fill in some of these blank spaces. So there you have it, there is a nice, simple, but well thought out large city centre plaza for your wall-to-wall -wall city. And don't forget the five tips, symmetry and orientation, integrate your public transport, don't be afraid of green spaces, use the decals, and of course, study your assets and use the props available to you. If you have enjoyed this video, likes, comments and shares are really appreciated. And if you do want to see some more really highly detailed city using mostly vanilla assets, do come and check out my Oridan series. And there is a lot better looking high density residential than what we have got here in our test city. But I'm super excited to integrate some plazas and promenades into that. But that is all from me for today. So thank you so much for tuning in and I will catch you again next time. Bye bye.